Hey everyone, welcome back once again to my channel. I'm Somnath and today I'll just uh, explain or kind of uh, walk you through how I could able to install ABAP uh, platform trial system in my personal machine. So this is the blog post which got already 124 likes. Of course it should be because SAP has offered a bunch of uh, ABAP capabilities uh, as an as an Docker image uh, which you can just you know install to your machine. Uh, of course if your machine uh, supports that hardware requirement uh, then you are all set you can perform uh, all kind of an abap uh, experiment from your machine itself and you are your own boss okay you are not limited to an authorization or something you can play around all right but uh, what uh, what are the things that i had to do to achieve this and i can show you like this is running uh, this is the image and this is the containers it's already running from my machine and i also integrated my eclipse uh, running on this for HANA, right above for HANA. All right, so I'll walk you through uh, step by step. So stay with me. I believe you'll uh, also get to know certain things that I already faced, and I'll explain. I'll give all the details in the description box uh, so that you can check it out later if you want something uh, that you're not working for you. All right, so kind of a troubleshooting I wanted to mean. Anyway, so this is the ABAP uh, platform uh, trial, which is the Docker image, as I said, they have offered in this particular URL, you can find it. So if you don't know Docker, it's simple, it's kind of a, a box, which is which will have all the required software plugins uh, already packed up. And uh, you can just, you know, get this Docker image in your machine, and you can just create a container out of that. And the container is your actually the runtime execution a piece out of this image that will build so any kind of a dependent software any kind of a dll files anything needed by the main software all things will be wrapped within this packet so that it doesn't complain if you if those things are not there already in your machine so it is really a nice concept um i believe if you it, it helps this basic introduction about the docker all right so you need a docker hub kind of a, a docker hub access which is a, a free account that you need to create and uh, docker and docker hub is very very similar like your git and github okay so git is actually a local git which you need to install similar way you also need to install the docker in your personal machine so that's what this is the docker i have already installed and side by side you need also to have an access on the github uh, sorry not github the docker hub uh, which is equivalent to github right so many software packages if you want to share across with your friends and colleagues you can use the docker hub uh, to do that right so this is the two things you need to have uh, have it side by side uh, important thing is your machine hardware which is extremely important uh, it needs more than 32 gb of ram or equal to 32 gb in my case it is just a match i have only 32 gb of ram okay i can also show that uh, that how you can check it um, you know go to personal machine go not local c personal machine go for certain properties and here you can see the installation ram okay fine so that, that's the reason i was able to so what is the thing you have to do you have to once you install this docker uh, then you have to run this docker okay without running the docker you cannot run those two commands so make sure you have running this docker during executing this docker you can come across one kind of a problem and that is called a linux uh, machine linux server is actually not running and you have to simply run a command called ws dash dash update okay so that is what the command you need to use uh, so command name is ws dash dash update so once you run this command what will happen it will install the linux uh, distribution in, in, within your within your windows machine because docker runs on linux and uh, uh, for the windows what happens it will create one virtual machine and from that virtual machine uh, the another virtual things will be running right kind of a multiple layering will happen but if you already on Linux distribution, Linux system, uh, then if you can run Docker, it will be much uh, beneficial for you. Uh, it will get a much you know, better performance. All right. So now let's go to this one. So what I did after running this Docker, right? I just you know executed this command Docker pull and that way this image got downloaded. This is what you can see. Uh, this 30 days ago, SAP has actually created this uh, particular Docker image and this is the tag 1909 and this is kind of a space that it will take within your machine once you have this image what you have to do you have to run the second command docker run runs in an interactive mode that means i can run this this command and it is running like that 
and if i put a control c then it will go for a you see uh, to stop and be uh, to able to safety safely start again use the control c or you can use a docker command kind of a this all right so now once you do that this is the machine name uh, which is created and it will have its own equivalent uh, ip address and the uh, the system id created as an a4 hana this is the container uh, which will create this is the container name right as you can see the container name a4h it will create this one and this is the corresponding internal ports which will be exposed okay so what happens when the container is running then this is the port available for uh, connecting with any id for example acp gui client or maybe eclipse edd anything any client that you want to uh, develop de development client and that you need to integrate with your uh, container this is the port that you need to look at but it will not be available outside the container until unless you are exposing this uh, kind of ip so you can do that this way you can give any other name 8080 that means 3200 equivalent port is 8080 outside of the container okay so that way this exposure is done and finally um, don't forget uh, to add this one uh, skip uh, limit checks because certain you know limits uh, it will uh, it will give a problem if you don't add this those limits you can correct if you are running on linux machine but for windows you don't have the privilege so better add this uh, add-on okay i also added one more thing uh, that is called uh, this one i believe uh, one second yeah i just also added one more thing called agree to scp license because i was getting certain uh, warning message so you can also add this agree to sap license after this skip limit checks and run this the moment you will run what will happen it will take this um, image and it will basically start creating a container and it will also start executing the container it will take good amount of time okay so uh, certain uh, important information if you would like to see um right uh, this one probably you see once it started uh, it gives the hardware key then kind of a expiry date when it will be expiring 537 more than a year almost i have a time to uh, to play around with this uh, particular things certain information as you can see over here you'll find all right so that's all and uh, what i wanted to see show you next yeah once this is up and running of course now you can click on that you can go to you can see all the logs over here go to terminal and you can see you can run like who am i is the root and the root user means it's already running let's move on with the id integration so for that you can click on this url okay this url will take you this one it will give you some more additional information as i just explained as i said this is the one it will you know connect it for your know, sap gui or maybe eclipse LED. so this is the port i'll be using all right let's move on a little further sap gui okay so i don't have an sap gui installed uh, client so i'll be using my eclipse as i said but i'll be using the same information to connect my eclipse already so what i have to do i already connected this but uh, no problem let's do one more round so click on the project and from here you can click on above and you'll have two options so obviously uh, we'll be going for above project because uh, my sap is already within my on my personal machine so definitely this is the option the other one is for the btp uh, area so this one i have to just double click and uh, it will give you this prompt uh, the prompt because i have not uh, sap gui installed right so that's why giving this prompt no worries you can ignore it and now you can manually maintain make sure you change this connection type as um, custom application server give this system id as a4h you can give any name but a4h means above for hana all right so now this is the uh, client or kind of a application server so you can give this one or this one it's equivalent but i, I have basically I'll, i have given this one only i'll show you also in detail but what i wanted to say this one you can give this ip internal application server and instance number should be zero zero okay this is also given over here you see? instance number zero zero correct and SID is for H. Once it's done, uh, I have not done any SNC or you know a kind of a uh, SSO or configuration. I have not done. So click on next. Client is 001. I have given. 
and user i have given here that is called developer and next is my password password is this one okay and this password is um, applicable for all three this one uh, this one and this one all three different type of users once you've done that uh, what will happen you may encounter a problem and the problem is this one i just took a note of this this is the eclipse error this kind of a problem you can find and i found it a kind of a java connector you know a setup was missing because certain dll file was missing from microsoft so what i did i just you know went to this url uh, this is what the visual c plus for reducible package i just downloaded okay and i just install it it's very fast only 6.9 mb and very fast i just install this part okay x64 all right once you've done that then it will not complain and you are all set your you know things will be created i can also show this one how it is linked up go to properties and uh, you can see this is the server this is the instance this is the user this is the client so this all set and you can start working on for example i created one local class as you can see jetc jetcl first class and i just created welcome to abap that's all and let's run this one uh, you can run f f9 or right click and click go for run as uh, console or f9 anything you see welcome to abap hooray so my abap is um, installed in my personal machine and more systems more kind of uh, artifacts going forward I'll, I'll be also able to create or generate out of it and i can demonstrate to you i hope you enjoyed this video uh, give me a thumbs up if you like my uh, like my work subscribe my channel if i'm not done yet uh, don't forget to set the bell icon because it will help you to intimate the moment i upload a new content We'll meet again with a different topic. Till then, goodbye. Take care.